Hey, what's going on guys? This is ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Poco F3. Now I've heard a lot of talk about this phone being a flagship destroyer and for the price and the specs on paper, it actually looks like a really awesome little device here. Poco offers these in three different color variants and two different storage variations. The one I have here has 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, but they also offer a lower end model with 6 gigs of RAM and 128GB of storage, but when it comes down to performance, they should basically perform exactly the same. As for the price, these go anywhere from $329 up to $440. I picked this one up on eBay for $429 brand new. It's a globally unlocked version, and I'll leave some links in the description. Along with the phone itself, we're also going to get a USB Type-C to 3.5mm audio adapter, and they've also included a silicone case. The color variant I chose was the blue one, and it was $10 more than the white or the black, but I gotta say, in person, this looks absolutely amazing. So really, when it comes down to it, the main claim to fame to a phone like this is this 120Hz AMOLED display. It is absolutely beautiful, and the Snapdragon 870 CPU that this is powered by. A little closer look at the back, and pictures or video just doesn't do it justice. This is a really bright blue, and it looks really nice. As for the camera setup on the rear, we have three shooters, a 48 megapixel, an 8 megapixel, and a 5. This will do up to 4K 30 FPS, and I think they locked these down at 30 FPS and save 60 for their more expensive devices. But they have included a 20 megapixel selfie cam up front. The Poco F3 has stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, so we do have speakers on each side. Down here, we also have our dual SIM card tray. Unfortunately, this does not support a micro SD card. We also have USB Type-C for charging. Over here on the right-hand side, we have our volume rocker and the side-mounted fingerprint reader. And over on the left-hand side, it's just nice and clean. So like I mentioned, this does have some decent specs for the price. For that CPU, we have the Snapdragon 870, basically an overclocked 865+, plus, with the biggest core going up to 3.2 gigahertz. The GPU is the Arduino 650. You can get this with 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM, and it's all going to be running LPDDR5. 128 to 256 gigabytes of storage, but both of them use UFS 3.1, so it's going to be really fast. We have a 6.67 inch 120 hertz AMOLED display at 1080 by 2400. It does support HDR10 plus and it will go up to 1300 nits of brightness. Dual stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, a 4520 milliamp hour battery with 33 watt fast charging. You do get that 33 watt charger in the box. And as for the operating system, it's running MIUI 12 for Poco phones and this is based on Android 11. When it comes to UI performance, the Snapdragon 870 definitely has more than enough power, and that paired with the new MIUI 12 actually works out really well. As you can see, this thing is super snappy. I haven't noticed any freezing or anything like that. Given this is the 8GB model, but if you went with 6, you'd have just as good performance. I mean, 6 gigs of RAM for an Android device is more than enough. As for the wide vine level, I was actually surprised to see that we do have level 1, so we can get full HD with Netflix, HBO, Amazon Prime, all of your favorite streaming apps will work in HD. Real quick, I just wanted to show you a little bit of YouTube video playback. With this new setup here and the latest version of YouTube, you can go to 4K. The screen isn't going to support 4K, but uh, as you can see... It will handle it. I mean, it's going to play it just fine. And I got to say, this AMOLED display looks absolutely beautiful. And since we have those dual stereo speakers built in with Dolby Atmos, the sound on this thing is amazing. Another thing I always like to do is run some benchmarks. So first up, we have Geekbench 5 coming in with a single core score of 987 and a multi of 3346. Next up, 3D Mark Wildlife. This is a Vulcan benchmark for the GPU. 4,247. And finally, we have Antutu with a total score of 678,422. So, I mean, just taking a look at these benchmarks and comparing them to older phones, this is definitely not a slouch. Now it's time to move over to a little bit of gaming. First up, we have Minecraft. I'm set at 16 chunks here. We do have fancy graphics on. And unfortunately, I guess this isn't on the white list to go over 60 FPS because we're kind of stuck at 60, even though we have that 120 hertz screen. Hopefully, in the near future, they will enable it for this device because it will definitely handle it. Next up, we have Fortnite, high settings, and we're set at 30 FPS. There is no option for 60 with this device. It's kind of like Minecraft. It is a newer device, and just like the last game we saw, hopefully this will be enabled because, again, 
Something like this can handle this game at 60, even if you have to drop it down to medium settings, but like it sits now, high settings, 30 FPS, it's fully playable. Next on the list, Call of Duty Mobile, high settings with the extreme frame rate on, we're at 60, and this is going to run it just fine. This is a very well optimized game, and it's super smooth on this device. And finally here for native Android gaming, Genshin Impact. Now with this one I did have to turn some of the settings down to medium to get a steady 60 out of it, and even then every once in a while you will see it drop down. And even on the Snapdragon 888 and something like the Galaxy S21, I've had trouble running this at max settings 60 FPS, so with this one we're at high medium settings, 60, and it's running great. This is definitely playable on the Poco F3. Moving over to some emulation, first up we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in, 5x resolution, you're going to have a great time with PSP on this device. Even the harder games to emulate like Ghost of Sparta and Chains of Olympus are going to run on this, you might have to drop down to around 3x, but we're getting amazing performance with the 870. And by the way, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth to play all of these emulators here. I got one more PSP game to test and then we'll move up a bit. Taking a look at some 3DS performance using Citra MMJ. This is not the build from the Google Play Store. I've just had much better luck with the MMJ build. We're at 2x resolution. We don't have any of the weird audio issues going on. And overall 3DS performance using this emulator here is outstanding. Even games I've had trouble running in the past on a higher end chip, the Snapdragon 888 run flawlessly with the MMJ build on the Poco F3. And finally we have GameCube using the Dolphin emulator with the Vulcan back in upscaled to 720p. I've had really good luck on the 870 using the latest version of Dolphin from the official website, so that's the one I would definitely check out. And when it comes down to it, in my experience on Android, you know, some games run better with OpenGL, some games run better than Vulkan, but for the most part, I've had really good luck with Vulkan on this one. And because I was already here with the Dolphin emulator, I figured we'd test out Wii. There's not a lot of great games that will utilize the GameCube controller, but here we have Sonic Colors, Vulcan back in, 720p, running at full speed. When it comes to battery life, it's not bad at all. I ran a PC Mark battery test and I got 12 hours and 47 minutes out of it. Video playback, 17 hours and 51 minutes, and this thing charges up from 0 to 157 minutes. Now, as for gaming, it will vary. Depending on what kind of games you're playing, if you're going with something like Genshin Impact, Call of Duty Mobile, PUBG, I'd say you'd get around 5 to 6 hours out of it. But if you mainly do like gaming, like the uh, Tapper apps and things like that, I mean, you could get 9 hours continuous gameplay out of this thing. So overall, I'm really enjoying the Poco F3. That Snapdragon 870 can basically handle anything that we throw at it. We have a beautiful 120Hz AMOLED display. It's not the highest resolution, but it's still really pleasing to the eye. The built-in dual stereo speakers definitely put out enough sound, and overall, I mean, this is a top-notch little device, especially for the price. 
Now, the one you saw in this video is the higher end model, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigabytes of internal storage. But if you wanted to get out a bit cheaper and get the one with 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, you will see the same performance. With everything we saw in this video, that extra 2 gigs of RAM really isn't helping out because we're not even hitting 6 gigs of total usage with everything we've tested here. So if you're looking for a decent gaming slash emulation device and you really don't want to break the bank, I can highly recommend the Poco F3. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. If there's anything else you want to see running on the F3, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one up, I will leave a few links in the description. But that's it for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.